You like cute things? Well, I got your cute thing right here! It's my dog. We're gonna talk about it. Let's go! Fun fact, before I made YouTube videos way back in spring of 2016, I briefly dabbled in making webcomics about my life. Overall, I wanted them to be more about deep and sad things in my life, while my videos would be more on the funny and happy side, but then I sort of stopped making them. Like, I haven't made one in months. Maybe I'll get back to those someday, I don't know. Anyway, back when I was just starting to make these comics, one of the earliest ones was about my dog named Cookie, and boy was it popular. At least compared to the others I made. Apparently the internet really likes these things called pugs, and coincidentally I happen to own one of said pugs. So maybe that had to do with the comic's popularity, but I still like to think it had to do with my witty writing and good drawing skills, personally. <laughs> Either way, I figured in the off chance it WAS my dog that made the comic so popular, I'd share with you all some witty anecdotes involving her in a video format, too. If you're more of a cat person, I'm sorry, but I don't really have any stories for you since I haven't had a cat in almost three years. I still miss you, Prince. You were a good cat. Backstory time! After my family lost our previous dog Brody in an accident and we were all done being emotionally traumatized by it, I promise this video has no more mention of dead animals, please keep watching! My mother managed to convince the rest of our family to get the dog she had always wanted, a pug. My mom's a sucker for cute and chubby things, and therefore pugs were right up there for her with babies and this one Christmas ornament we always put on our tree that she nicknamed Fat Santy. Which is redundant because Santa's already fat. And while personally my dad and my sister and I all preferred other kinds of dogs to pugs, Corgis and Borzois for the win! We all caved and let my mom have her pugs, since my sister was already in college and I was only a year away from leaving myself and we figured she needed a way to fill the emotional void. So one day in June of 2014, my parents and I went down to some town in Missouri somewhere and got to meet our new family member for the first time. The breeder lady who owned her said she had named her Novia, which is Spanish for girlfriend, I think, because apparently this puppy was very loving. Oh, that's so cute! A sweet and loving pug puppy! I can't wait to take her home with us! Dad, the puppy scratched mom and now she's bleeding everywhere. Yeah, Novia was the most ironic name the breeder could have given our new dog. Even to this day, she is not cuddly whatsoever. If you ask for a kiss, she looks the other way like she has something better to pay attention to. If she jumps at you and you bend down to pet her, she just runs away like she completely forgot you existed. And if you try to hold her, she either wiggles until you drop her or she breathes these really loud sighs of irritation until you put her down. Although, the latter might just be me since I tend to hold her like this. And this. And this. Look. Prince was my sister's cat, so I didn't hold him too much, and I loved Brody to death, but he was 45 pounds, so lifting him was impossible to do. Ergo, I never learned how to hold small animals right. Sue me. Anyway, as you can imagine, we didn't keep the name Novia very long, and after tossing various names around, my dad suggested Cookie, after the baseball player Cookie Rojas, because my dad likes the Royals, I guess. And the name stuck. Although, given the fact that she's a purebred pug, I decided to give her one of those ridiculous names that all the dogs and dog shows have. So thusly, my dog's full name is Chocolate Chip and not an Oreo cookie. B b because she's the color of a chocolate chip cookie and not an Oreo- It's clever! Shut up! Here's some random fun facts about Cookie. Number one. As I mentioned in the comic I made about her, Cookie is a maniac. When my family first got her, she really liked chewing on soda cans, and when my mom worried she'd cut herself on the metal and she learned to chew plastic bottles instead, I said in the comic that she'd, quote, willingly kill a man if it meant she could chew on a plastic bottle, unquote. But since making the comic, I have learned that this is not true. No, Cookie has straight up turned into a goat and now will eat any trash we throw at her. Is that a thing goats do? I've never owned goats, so I have no clue, honestly. Whether that be a plastic bottle, a paper food wrapper, or any container that once had food in it, she will eat it. Here's some proof of the fact that I documented recently. Here we see the pug in her natural habitat, my messy and disgusting car full of plastic trash that she left. What are you- Dude, no! No, 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 that- no! You cannot eat what's left of the cookie dough! That is cannibalism! Stop it! Stop it, cookie! cookie. That, that is wrong. That is wrong. Hey. 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 What we, uh, hey stop it. Stop it. Uh, I can't win with you. I cannot win. Numero dos. The reason the lady we got her from named her Novia was partially because it was Spanish, and since Cookie was born on Cinco de Mayo, it seemed fitting. 
That's right, my dog is a Cinco de Mayo baby. Here's a picture of her wearing a sombrero on her first birthday. She won't let us put it on her anymore, though, because she's roughly 17 in dog years now and is trying to prove to us that she's not a little kid anymore and doesn't want to do dumb baby stuff like wear a hat on her birthday. Or maybe the hat was just itchy. I don't know, that's entirely possible. Number three. Amongst the dozens of nicknames I have for Cookie, like Kook, Cooker, Tuki, Tuki Pookie, Boober, Booby, Stink, Beeb, Poop Baby, Pooper Scooper, Menace to Society, and Pressure Cooker, I also call her Golden Snitch from time to time, because Cookie is like the dog version of a Quidditch Snitch. They're both small, they have similar colors, they're super fast, they're nearly impossible to catch, and once you do, it truly feels like you deserved the 150 points for Ravenclaw, considering how strategic, nimble, and lucky you had to be to do it in the first place. I don't know, I just sort of found those observations amusing. Number four. Despite her small size and complete lack of intimidation, Cookie is convinced that the entire safety of our neighborhood rests on whether or not she is on patrol. And by patrol, I mean she sits on the top of our couch like a cat, stares out the living room window, and barks like mad at the slightest hint of movement. She sees a car moving. She sees a neighbor getting the mail. She sees one of our neighbor's dogs. Too bad that what she thinks is loud and intimidating sounds like this from outside. So really, the only people she's getting her message of turf superiority to are us few who are cursed to live in the same abode as she does. Number five. Being a pug, Cookie obviously has slight respiratory problems. Even though she's relatively healthy for a pug, Cookie's default exhale is still a snort, or if she's sniffing something, a sneeze. I cannot count how many times Cookie has come up to me, sneezed on me, and left. Truly, I am blessed to own such a cute dog. I'd say the worst account of it happening to me was just the other day when I got back from getting a haircut and I grabbed a pack of Pop-Tarts from the kitchen and sat down to watch TV. Cookie got up, sniffed the shampoo smell of my hair, sneezed in my eye, and walked away. Two seconds later, after checking her patrol post, she came back to sniff my hair again. She stepped on my Pop-Tarts, sneezed on me again, and then jumped onto the floor and started begging for my Pop-Tart wrapper. She sat there, barking and scratching at me for a solid four minutes, waiting for me to finish my stepped-on Pop-Tarts, and once I irritatingly tossed the wrapper on the floor, she refused to give me the lie today. All that mattered to her by then was my Pop-Tart wrapper, and she had no regrets about it. Look, I even took a picture of her after the fact. That is the face of a dog who looks surprised to see her owner even exist, let alone gave her the very thing she's chewing on. Yeesh. Look, I love her to death, but Cookie, why you gotta be like this dog? Answer me. <laughs> ah. All of this could have been avoided had we just got in a corgi. Cause corgis are cute and they don't have breathing problems. They have pointy ears and they've got little nubby legs. And most important of all, they look like the rare and little pants. <laughs>